Also ich war sehr gespannt, wie es mir eigentlich gehen wird, wenn ich das mal wirklich so sehe. ganz genau, wie die Kühe reingetrieben werden, durch ein enges Gatter, durch einen Bolzenschluss getötet werden, dann unglaubliche Mengen an Blut, also diese Kuh kippt dann einfach auf den Boden, es wird der Hals aufgeschnitten, ganz viele Menschen fangen an, diese Kühe zu zerfallen. Was heißt es eigentlich persönlich, wenn ich Fleisch esse und welche Konsequenzen hat das für mich und auch für den Planeten? Wenn ich nicht darüber nachdenke und mein Verhalten nicht ändere, dann wird es schwer werden, die gesamte Weltbevölkerung zu ernähren, weil nicht alle können Fleisch essen. Nicht die ganze Zeit, immer. Das wird einfach nicht funktionieren, dafür ist die Erde nicht groß genug, da brauchst du fünf von der Erde, fünf Stück. I founded the food rescue program in 2003. Uh, this program's goal is to pick up excess food from uh, hotels, restaurants, and bakeries and deliver that to scavenger communities, uh, communities of people who are the lowest levels of society in terms of uh, socioeconomic status. I call myself a professional beggar. That's, that's, really, that, that's yeah, what I, that's that's what I am. That's a funny description, but... I'm a professional beggar. I spend my time begging for leftover food, begging for a bit of money. You're begging for other people, too? Yes, you? absolutely. Um, and it's depressing sometimes to be a, a professional beggar. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's such a great picture for this inequality of the world. It's like having too much in, in a fancy place and then bringing that food to people that are having not enough food. Right. Right. Like, how do you deal with that personally? For me, it's very difficult, personally, very difficult. Um, because not only do I have to find hotels who want to give the food, I have to find the funding for the program. And when I find the funding, I deal with big companies and wealthy people. And at the same time, the same day, I might go to the slums and uh, work with people who have nothing. If you hear the predictions of so many people living on one planet and there's no more space, what do you think is going to so, happen? If I'm not mistaken, the food waste from the US alone yeah. can feed the whole world. Wow. Right? So what we're doing with this program is more like a band-aid, right? Yeah. So we're helping people, obviously. We're making a difference, yes. But it's more like a band-aid. It's not getting to the root of the problem, yeah. right? The root of the problem is the waste, The root of the problem is the awareness, it's the sense of urgency, it's the, the, the feel that we need to do something about it, which all of that doesn't exist. Emmanuel finanziert sich über Spenden. Und es ist halt sehr schwer für ihn, damit diese ganze Organisation langfristig zu finanzieren. So, es ist immer wieder so, dass Leute spenden, dann wieder nicht mehr. Und er muss immer wieder Überzeugungsarbeit leisten, damit er alle Menschen 
bezahlen kann, die für ihn arbeiten und helfen, dieses Essen umzuverteilen. Und er ist genau in diesem Netz gefangen. Also eigentlich ist er irgendwie in der Situation in der Mitte, in der er eigentlich fast nur verlieren kann. Und ich habe großen Respekt für das, was er tut und für diese Hingabe, die er zeigt. Wir sind wahrscheinlich 10 Milliarden Menschen, 20, 50, so dass es sehr absehbar eigentlich ist, dass es sehr schwer wird, die Weltbevölkerung zu ernähren. Indonesien wird als eines der Länder angesehen, wo Nahrungsmittelversorgung relativ bald ein Problem werden könnte. Und immer mehr Menschen essen immer mehr Fleisch. Und man sieht halt, wie schwierig es ist, all die Kühe auch zu ernähren. Und diese Fläche geht halt einfach für Nahrungsmittel wie Reis verloren. Heutzutage ist es schon so, dass immer wieder Reis also Grundnahrungsmittel zugekauft werden müssen, um die Völker zu ernähren. Obwohl wir in einem Land sind, was wahnsinnig fruchtbar ist. Eigentlich absurd. Also eine sichere Nahrungsmittelproduktion ist halt einer der Grundpfeiler von der Gesellschaft. Nur wenn alle sicher leben und sich darüber keine Gedanken machen müssen, haben sie die Zeit, sich um andere Dinge zu kümmern, zum Beispiel die Fortentwicklung der Gesellschaft oder der Technologie oder andere wichtige Themen. Das heißt, der Zugang zu sicherem Essen ist genauso wie Gesundheit, wie Wasser, sind die Grundpfeiler von der Gesellschaft, damit sie sich entwickeln kann. My vision is really to bring the an urban farming to the city because it can supply at least half of the supply that the city needs. We combine everything together. Uh, the concept of hydroponic, aquaponic, and aeroponic. So it works in an ecosystem, we call it. So we have the fish in the bottom. And when we feed it, there will be the waste from the fish, right? And then the fish waste is actually converted by the microbacteria into nutrients for the plants. And then that nutrients is pumped to the top of the tower and it drips down and it becomes oxygenated. And in same time, the nutrient that is in the water is absorbed by the roots of the plants. This is five times one meter square. Okay. How much vegetable? Oh, let's just say how much plants you can grow and how much fish you can grow, you can guess. Wow. A year? No, I mean like uh, in just... Uh, at the, at, this, at the yeah. same time? Every four months. Every four months? Yeah. So we'd say these are at least a few hundred? 900. 900? And 500 fish. At the same time? Right. At the same time. And you harvest everything every four months. Well, but not the fish, right? The fish as well. The fish as well? Yeah, the fish. I mean, depending on the type of the fish, anyway. Yeah. So that's a huge biomass every four months on such a tiny Complex space, space right? Yeah. yeah. How many of these stations a city like Jakarta would need in order to sustain itself? I think each apartment needs at least two or three, yeah, I think. Depending on the number of people on the apartment, I think. At least, I think, I know 900 plants maybe can save like, I don't know, let's just say uh, 10 households. Do you think it's re realistic that everybody gets one of these at home? I think it's realistic in yeah. a way. When the price is going down and it becomes seamless, you don't even need to think how to grow plants. Like, I, think, I think it's possible. How do you think? I do think um, that it's possible. I think it has to be somehow easy for the people because yeah. people are lazy. Exactly. Er liebt Essen und die Produktion von Essen und ist da wahnsinnig interessiert. Und genau aus dieser Motivation heraus hat er diese Vertical Farm gebaut. Und das ist super. Es ist jemand, der zeigt, dass es möglich ist. Der den Mut hat, so eine Anlage hier zu bauen, zu zeigen, dass man sie betreiben kann, experimentieren kann und eben einfach zeigt, dass es möglich ist. Und solche Leute braucht es. So 
we're in South Jakarta right now, um, and this is a community in Cilandak. There's about 500 families here, mm -hmm. and um, they are scavengers. So they, they collect and they recycle the trash for Jakarta. Without them, there's no recycling. It's 500 families, uh, but on average, we have about 100 families coming each time. In places and communities and locations where there is an obvious increase in density of people and at the same time a decrease or the same level amount of food being produced, um, you'll create situations um, that are like a time bomb. So um, when people are desperate, when they see their children cannot eat, they will either have to move to look for the food or they will have to fight for their food. You can see each person brings two things, right? They bring um, a larger one, and that's usually for the bread and the pastries, and a smaller one more like for the veggies yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. So, yeah, how, mu how much food is it? Uh, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, it looks kind of okay. Yeah. This is from two trucks. Yeah. It's kind of like okay. It's not. Yeah. It's not a lot. Yeah. Um, but. But you always have to kind of measure how much it is right. to actually right. distribute it evenly. Yes. And we, it's very hard to do. So often what happens is everybody gets one go, and we try to make it fair. Yeah. And then if there's still extra food, then yeah. people want more, they can come for more. Yeah. But we make sure everyone at least gets one, one, one go. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, tricky. Yeah. Yang panggil, ling ling ya. A little bit of it, or yeah, just. Uh... Hello, Bu. <laughs> I started uh, helping people when I was 15. And when I was 20, I took the decision after I finished university to do this full time with my life. Um, and I've been doing this for the last 17 years. I feel it's a necessity. I feel I have to do something. And so I really would like to do just a small something to help other people. But I really had a few crises moments where I was, I was like, enough of this, enough, enough, enough. It's a constant struggle, but I realize that this is like in my DNA now. It's part of me, and I realize that I will continue to do this for the rest of my life. Sorry. Kabar. Okay. This is gone. Siap. Es gibt kaum ein besseres Bild, um die Ungerechtigkeit der Welt aufzuzeigen. Wenn hier in Jakarta dieser Reichtum total greifbar ist und wenn 200 Meter weiter ein Slum ist, wo die Menschen hungern und sie es sich nicht leisten können, genug zu essen. Also, weißt du, hier wird es weggeschmissen und es landet da im Müll und direkt daneben sind die hungernden Menschen, die es nicht, die da nicht rankommen. Und man denkt so, oh ey, diese dieser Aufwand, der reingeflossen ist, Nahrungsmittel zu produzieren, die sind so kostbar. Und dann, dann mache ich mir meine, meinen Teller zu voll und esse nicht auf und haue das alles weg. Und daneben an, direkt daneben an, sind halt Menschen, die verhungern oder zu wenig zu essen haben. Es ist einfach krass. Es ist einfach wirklich als Bild unglaublich und macht einen Tod traurig. Echt. Es gibt diese Idee von dem World Overshoot Day. Bis wann verbrauchen wir die Ressourcen, die sich in einem Jahr regenerieren würden? Und das war dieses Jahr der 2. August. Das heißt, nach sieben Monaten hat die Weltbevölkerung schon so viel konsumiert, wie in einem Jahr sich regeneriert. Das heißt, alles danach bis zum Jahresende ist das, was wir zusätzlich von der Erde wegnehmen. Das, was wir zusätzlich verbrauchen, wie wir quasi Kredit nehmen.
I believe in the future we need to have more biodiversity in terms of the consumption of the food that we eat. We need to reduce the inefficiency in food production and find new ways to grow the food. We are here in one of the insect farms here in Mala, where we get our insect from. As you can see here, all the wooden boxes where they grow the insects. And here is a type of insect that we use for oil production. It's called, uh, it's the larva stage of a darkling beetle. It's called superworm. And here also we can see the adult beetles where they will lay eggs and grow into this uh, larva. They are really nutritious. They have a lot of protein, fats, vitamins, minerals. Yeah, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. And they're big. They are really big. So this is three months old. Mm -hmm. Actually the ideal time to harvest them. We are an uh, insect biorefining company. We are developing nutrient-dense, sustainable alternative to palm oil made of edible insects. Uh, palm oil can be produced uh, up to four tons per hectare per yep. year. And with this insect, we can produce 150 tons per year. Wow. So it's almost 40 times wow. more yield. That's incredible. What, what is the thing you're trying to change with this? What, what is the thing which drives you nuts how the world is today? And why do you do this? Yeah, because... Uh, if you see right now, uh, up to almost half of all packaged items in supermarkets uh, contains palm oil. It's really frustrating because uh, there are no other alternatives in the market right now. Uh, we can, hopefully we can save a lot of uh, space, rainforest that uh, currently being def uh, cleared for palm oil plantation. Mm -hmm. and we can also we can have enough space to produce an other cultivation instead of only one commodity yeah. that is palm oil. You can all of it? Yeah, fill all of it. Fine. Yeah. Very cool. So how do you feel after seeing all these uh, insect grown and then... I mean, uh, seeing them crawling around here is uh, still like not a natural thing to me. Um, seeing the finished products pretty much looks the same to me as like normal, normal oil, normal butter, right? Yeah. So if, if I would not see that on the same spot, I would not know, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Is it a good business? Uh, like, do people invest in this? Yeah, we just uh, recently closed our uh, seed round. So the plan is, with this fund, in, we will use it for constructing our facility. Okay. We will scale the uh, farming facility and also build the pilot plan. So also, uh, we'll, the fund will be used for finish our trial with some companies that we're already working with. Very nice. Yeah. So we will have cooking oil, butter, and fatty alcohol and we will do trial with different companies that utilize all these ingredients. Yeah, this is the future of our food system. It's funny, there's like nothing inside. Yeah. Also die Idee klingt erstmal super sinnvoll. Ich glaube, sie ist halt in sehr frühen Stadium. Und eigentlich habe ich die große Frage, ist es so, dass er das wirklich promoten kann? Also wirklich ähm, wollen Firmen das Ersatz als Ersatz für Palmöl benutzen? Ähm, ist die Hemmschwelle von Menschen eigentlich nicht so groß, Insektenöl zu benutzen? Und Ich glaube, das ist natürlich etwas, was wir alle irgendwie überdenken sollten. Wenn es eine ökologisch sinnvollere Alternative ist, dann sollten wir das alle machen. 
Nichtsdestotrotz glaube ich, dass es Überzeugungsarbeit bedarf, darauf umzuschwenken. Essen ist Kultur. Essen bringt Menschen zusammen. Es ist ein soziales Event, bringt eine Familie zusammen und ist was wahnsinnig Schönes. Fisch? Ja. Chicken. Chicken. Auf der anderen Seite hat man diesen Luxus, das so schön empfinden zu können, nur wenn genug Essen da ist. So we're sitting here on a nice table, having great food, and that, that's, that, that's a great thing, right? But um, we do have this growing population, and the question is, how can we feed them all? Like, what we have to do in order to get that done? This is like the starting point to feed everyone. Because like, I think in 2050, there'll be more people. So we need to research on like how to do things more effectively. But what's interesting about this era is that there's an era of sustainability. Where, I mean, people, don't, they don't like anymore like uh, killing animals in a certain way. So basically, we need to find new methods that is sustainable, but it also can produce in, the long, in, a, in a mass way, but in a harness way as well. I do agree, but uh, I think I would assume we're all living in a bubble of like like-minded people who are thinking that way. And if you look really at the population, how people behave and what they eat, it's not this way. It's not sustainable, and they kind of go for a lowest price. And like, I don't know. I'm not always like I like to be optimistic, but actually sometimes I'm not because uh, I think how most people behave is very different. Yeah, it's very different from everyone. Diese Schere zwischen Arm und Reich die wird halt immer, immer größer. Und das ist halt irgendwo ein Effekt aus dem System, in dem wir leben. Aus dem, wie Erfolg bewertet wird, aus dem, wie der Markt funktioniert und natürlich auch aus dem gesellschaftlichen und politischen System, in dem wir agieren. Genau das hat auch die Ungerechtigkeiten produziert. Das heißt, wenn wir die Rahmenbedingungen nicht ändern, glaube ich nicht, dass diese Probleme einfach verschwinden werden. Now I can't do things on a national, global scale, but I can do something in my community, in my neighborhood, in my area. Um, and even when I started doing this, my goal wasn't to help one million people, it was to help one person. And I'm a really big believer of little things make a big difference. And so I feel like now we can do something about it. And it'd be scary if we waited for the disaster to come to do something about it, because then it might be in some ways too late. Wir müssen halt anerkennen, dass wir die Gesellschaft sind. Ne? Und das Ziel müsste eigentlich sein, allen Menschen die gleiche Chance zu geben. Und es ist immer sehr leicht zu sagen, die Gesellschaft muss sich ändern, was es eigentlich heißt, du und ich, wir müssen uns ändern. Ja.